I am Andrea and in this video I am going to show you how to use the curefit function from the SciPy library uh, in order to, uh, to design and, and create let's say uh, an exponential fit and we will see we will use uh, this exponential fit to to actually model the the the, the data that represent the the, the total new the, the total cases the total infected cases related to the COVID nineteen uh, pandemic in the in the state of California and and then in the second part of this article of this video sorry uh, I will show you also how to apply an exponential fit this time will be uh, a decaying uh, exponential fit um, to uh, histograms. Uh, which might be useful because you often see uh, all around the, the websites or in different charts histograms that have been fitted with a with a with a whatsoever a whatsoever function. So just to begin with, I already uh, saved my my file, so I'm ready to begin. Uh, I will import some of the libraries that I'm going to use in this in this uh, in this script. So I will import observe oh, pandas which we will which will be useful uh, for um, importing the data from the COVID-19 pandemic uh, of course also numpy numpy and since we want to plot our data I will import Maplolib, um, yeah, and let's say SPLT, mm, and lastly, uh, the main character of this of this video. So, in order to 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 use the the, the function, the specific function that we're going to use is called curefit, and it's a function of the SciPy package. Uh, and the other sub package is called optimize, which is, let's say, another package of which belongs to to SciPy, and it has specific functions that regards the mathematics or optimizing the difference between models and datasets and so on. So have a look at it if you if you are interested in this kind of stuff. And I will import, as I said, the function curefit. Okay, uh, so basically, curefit is a very powerful function since it allows you to previously define your fun your fitting function and then to to use it in, in your code. So basically, we are uh, free to define whatever function we want and then to 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 use it as a, as a fitting model to to our datasets. So the the first thing that I want to do is to create a URL to my um, to the to the file that contains the the COVID-19 um, pandemic uh, data and I already saved that uh, in my, on my desktop so I will just copy paste the URL um, I will add that this is a row string okay uh, by the way this um, this file is a CSV file and it can be found on this site, which is the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention. And it contains some other bunch of data data files if you want to, 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 to analyze or to have a look at them. Um, I just uh, surfed the, the web to this page and click to export and exported the, the data as a as a CSV file. Um, so, um, uh, yeah, and the CSV file looks like this. So we have like the submission date, the state to, to, to the data I referred to, uh, the total number of cases and so on, and other, other information. We will focus this time, as I said, on the, on the total cases because, um, they will be, they will have, a um, an exponential uh, trend, um, sadly. Uh, 
a little bit a little let, let me just do a little disclaimer before starting with this with this video actually i'm not a virologist or i'm not a politician or an economic in, econo in economics so um the main focus the main aim of this video is just to show you how to apply the curve fit function to fit um, exponential data um i use this data as an example but i don't want you to express my my opinion on the pandemic and nor i want to to say that the, the model that i'm applying here is the right model to fit into and to describe the data of the pandemics so just remember this uh, and take it easy it's just a video to to, to show a, a python function and nothing else so um let's start uh, we have the url the first thing that i'm going to do is to create to, yeah uh, well to to to, to import uh, the file and to do that i will call file and I will use another pandas function, which is the pandas function rate csv, which accepts as an input the URL. And then, as you can see, um, our data are separated by uh, uh, by this, not as a not uh, with a with a tab or with a column. So I will specify the separator here and then as you can see you might see um, let me just scroll down yeah here this number the, the thousand is uh, identified with with a comma so I'm going to specify also this thing like this okay um, so in this way I imported the, the CSV file mm, the next step is to move this to, to, to import this file into a pandas data frame that allows us to 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 to, to use and to see and, and to to catch you to retrieve information from this file more easily <clears throat> so the thing that i'm going to do is to define a data frame df and that frame uh, and a past file so uh, just to have a look at the data frame i can print df dot head let's see how it goes here you can see I imported correctly the data frame. There are the different columns correctly divided. And in order, since we, we, we want to, to understand what are the categories that this uh, CSV file is made of, we can have a look at the either of the of the CSV by printing df.columns. And here are all the, the columns of the, here are the title of all the columns of the data frame. So we have the submission date, the state the two, the, that the data are referred to, the total number of cases, which is of our interest. Uh, I guess this stands for confirmed cases, the probability or probable cases, new cases, and all other um, data that we're not currently interested in too. okay i will leave the the print command um, in the in the code since it can be useful to to have all the 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 headers under under control when you, when we are dealing with the, with this type of files so i go i will go on um as i told you before i'm not interested in as you can see all these are different states and I'm interested only in the state of the California let's see if I can get it through which should be identified by CA 
can find it right now but it, oh here it is ca these are all the data referred to the state of california so in order to 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 use a a smaller data frame i will create a sub data frame in which i will store only the data of uh, of the california so i will call it dfca under underscore ca and i will use pandas again because it's very useful for for this kind of stuff because we we can refer to specific columns by just typing um, the name of the header. And for, for this reason, I wanted to to have the to have the, the header printed here below. So just let me just write this line, and then I will explain what I'm doing. So basically, with this line, I just set to save the all the the elements of the df of our data frames that uh, for, for, for which the, the 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 column state contains ca so all the the lines for which the state is equal to california will be stored in the in, the, in this new in this new data frame we can control if it has been done correctly so df ch see and there it is all only the the california details so perfect we can delete just this okay so i will leave a reminder uh data frame for ca data only perfect um now since we are interested as i said in the total number of cases I will just try to create an array for a NumPy array to, with which I can play more um, easily. So I will call it dot cases and I will define it as a NumPy array. And how can I retrieve this data? Well, I can just type df slash ca and i'm referring to the column that is called dot cases as we can see from the header dot cases so yes here is our array of dot cases so dot cases array perfect and and then i will define another array which contains the number of days that has passed that have passed from the first day of recording um, to do that basically i will use the well i will call it days as you can see and i will use the numpy function lin space and since the number of day will be equivalent to the the length of the of the array so the first day will be the day zero the last day will be the days equal to the length of the dot cases array and so basically lin space uh, asks us to to enter the beginning the end and the number of um, of steps let's say in which we want to to, to subdivide this interval so as as i said i want to each day uh, as a, as an element, so our the number of step of steps will be equal to the number of uh, uh, to to the to the length of the total cases array. So perfect. Now we have the our two arrays. This will be our x array. Let's see. Um, okay. Uh, now let's start with the. I can just separate this with the definition of the fitting function. Because as I said to you, uh, the curve fit function um, allows us to enter uh, what's a, whichever function we want to use for fitting the data. But we have to previously define the functions 
So to define the functions, like defining a classical function, I will call it exponential fit, x fit. And as parameter, we have the independent variable a, b, and c. Because, um, I mean, the usual form of exponential function is this one y equal to um, a time exp of b time x, which is independent variable plus a constant. Um, so what we do basically, we just have to define the same function that I just defined here. So y equal to a times numpy exponential, which is the exponential function, b times x plus c. And then of course, we want that our function will return the value of y. Perfect. This is the, the definition of the function. Now uh, we can just to separate again, call calling the function. So to call the fitting function in our code, we finally use the cure fit function. So uh, as all the fitting function, we can see the documentation here. As you can see, cure fit takes as mandatory input the f, which is the fitting function that we have previously defined, the x data, the y data, which are the two arrays that we also previously defined, and also it has a, a lot, uh, but, but really a lot of, uh, of other parameters that can be given as input. For example, pp0 is like the initial guesses for our code, for, for, for our fit, sorry. So if the fitting function is kind of difficult, sometimes it's 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 better to to give some initial guesses uh, and also to to lower the 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 way of the of the computational work uh, we can for example specify the bounds for our initial guesses or for our fit so tell him tell it to to not fit above or below a specific limit and all other stuff. So, I mean, the, there are really a lot of stuff, the number of iteration and so on. Um, for our case, we will just stick to the mandatory inputs and we will give also uh, an initial an initial guess for, for our value. So I will call, uh, oh, sorry. A another thing is that the output of this function will be the fitting parameters in, and it, it will give us the, the fitting parameter in the same order that we have defined them in this function. So A will be the first, B will be the second, and C will be the last one. So, okay, I will call the result of the fit, fit. And I will call the cure fit function. Mm, so the first input was the, the fitting function that we want to use, and it's the X fit without any input because now we want to give as an input days and dot cases perfect um another thing is that since the the period for which this day this data been recorded uh, covers a very long period and probably the data will be uh, increasing and then the, their distribution will not follow anymore from a certain but will not follow anymore uh, an exponential fit since the, probably the, the number of new cases has decreased has began to to decrease um, we just want to fit the first let's say 200 values so to say this we just use the slicing so from the beginning to the number 200, to the element number 200. And also for the total cases, we write the same. And then as I, as I told you, uh, we can give an initial guess for our fitting parameters and we can give it by saying P0 and we give it a list. 
and we give an initial guess for each of the three parameters. So A, we can say like point no no five. B, let's say this and C, let me let's make five. Perfect. Now the thing that we do every time we, we, we apply a fit with Python or with other um, programming code, um, we need to, to create the, the array that contains the result of this fit. So the result of the fit applied to the to the to the independent variable which is the days, so the, the X array. We define the function that contains this data like fit equ which stands for fit equation and this will basically now write again this function giving as a b and c the value obtained from this core of all of the of the fitting fun of the cure fit function so the first a will be fit zero zero because it's the first parameter um then it's multiplied by the exponential and then we have b which is the first result of the fit and the first of this array because cure fit uh, i mean the results of the fit will be an array that contains the the permit the value of the parameters so it's a two-dimensional array the first array this contained within it contains the, the value on the fitting parameter while the, the second array should contain the um, the covariance matrix which is related to the error of, of the fit mm, you can find well, however more information about it in the in the in the documentation of course so i was saying fit which is representing b so times our x-rays which as i told you is days we want to specify again only the first two hundreds days and then we have to sum c which is the last parameter of the fit zero and two perfect uh now what we want to do is to plot the results so i will just write this plotting oh. Perfect. And these are some basic function like figure. Mm, let's create the axis. Subplots. Perfect. Now uh, let's begin with with our uh, data. I will present the, the original data as a scatter plot so scatter um days first 200 element dot cases again first 200 elements perfect uh, i will give it a color the color let's make them blue and let's also give them a reasonable size like five should be perfect and then i will plot the the fit mm, so i will plot it as a classical plot uh, so the independent variables is always the same now we enter the the y array that we just created with the fitting results so fit equation um yes again the color also for this one i will make it uh sorry red um and then i will also add a little bit of transparency because uh, by writing this line after the the first uh, plot let's say it will be plotted uh, forward 
and so by adding a little bit of, of transparency I will be able to to see the the points behind the the fitting line okay um, just to complete I will also um, define a label just to be a little bit more clear so on the x-axis we have the number of days while on the y-axis set y label we have the total cases and we should be done actually let's see if it's working oh there it is perfect as you can see we have the actual points which are the blue ones and then our fitting equation our fitting curve which is it's really i mean it's pretty close to, to, to that. It's actually, it's a nice fit. Um, but again, it doesn't mean that it's the right fit. It's just an exponential fit. Um, so here, uh, yeah, we, we did it. <laughs> um, perfect. So this was the, the first part of the video. Um, in, the, in the second part, as I told you, we, we're going to see how to apply an exponential fit to, to an Instagram. So, uh, if you're still interested also in this thing, please follow, follow, follow along. Okay, so here we are again. I made a small break, uh, had a, a glass of water, then I'm ready to, to ready to go for with the, with the second part of, of the of this of this video. So as I told you, uh, this second part we will see how to apply an exponential fit. So, um, using the same function, so the the curve fit function, and how to apply this fit to uh, a histogram. Mm, so I can just basically cancel all this first part of the code, which is not useful anymore. And uh, yeah, the, the function that I will use are pretty much the same that I already that the the the, 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 the one that I already uh, defined here. So I'll just stick to them. So as I told you, um, we're trying to fit an, an histogram. So the first thing that we need to do now is to actually create an histogram. Uh, to do that, I will exploit another NumPy function, which is called exponentials. It's a special, uh, it's a function of the random function, which is a function that is within the NumPy library. And um, basically, that does a function random dot exponential. Uh, it, it basically draws a sample from exponential distribution. Uh, here, I, I look for the documentation about this function as you can see numpy random exponential uh, the function draw samples from an exponential distribution so even in the, the exponential distribution is this one the, the probability density function of the distribution and as you can see it's an exponential function and since it has the minus sign in the exponential uh, in the exponent sorry it means that basically we will have uh, a distribution that is decaying exponentially, not increasing this time. Um, but by the way, it's, it, it's the same. Um, the scale is this parameter here within the function, while the size uh, that we have to specify is the, the length of the, the array that will be generated, the length of the, of the number of draws that, will, that this function will do to an exponential distribution. So, uh, I've already called the, the function and I will specify, let's say, 5 for the, the factor within the exponent and the size. We will have a size of, let's, let's take 
10,000. So as I told, just to leave a reminder within the code, uh, we are generating uh, an exponential data set. Perfect. Now, we have the data, um, or at least we are supposed to, to, to have the, the, the exponential data. Uh, we have to we still have to, to, to create the histogram, but this is kind of easy. We can exploit again NumPy and use the function histogram, which basically here I have again the documentation. The function histogram compute the histogram of a, of a, of a set of data. So basically we we give as input the data that we have, which, which are the, the numbers that we have drawn from the exponential distribution. And there are the number of pins and, and the other, like other um, parameters that we are not currently interested into. So I will give the data, which are called data in this time, not very creative with the with the names and I will specify pins as auto which means that basically the the function will decide automatically which is the the, the bin size it's more practical and I didn't show you that basically the output of this function here it returns an array that contains the value of the histogram and also another array which contains the, the edges of, of the bin so the, 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 the beginning and the end of each, of each bin so since we're not interested in this parameter because we will create a separate x-axis uh, we only want the first result of histogram so I will specify the first result. Perfect. Uh, well, just uh, a brief explanation just to know what, what we are, just to, to, to understand what we are doing. I, I wanted to, to, to define you, to, to explain very briefly uh, what is an exponential distribution, because basically there are different types of distributions, as you or may already know. Uh, the, the most common one is, uh, uh, is I'm thinking now, is like the, the Gaussian, dis Gaussian distribution, or uh, which is also called the normal distribution. And, and an example of this distribution is like if you take the distribution of the heights or the weights of uh, the people that live in your country, or yeah, something like that, it will have a, a bell shape and because the the highest probability will be on the on the on the average value of uh, of of the observable that you are looking at on the other end i mean on the other end the, the, there can be different other different types of distribution this time as i told you we are looking at an exponential decay distribution uh, an example a practical example of a, of, a, of a distribution that is decaying uh, exponentially is if you if you think about the the probability that uh, I mean the the, the, the the time that your the battery of your car uh, will last if we took uh, this distribution it will decay exponentially because basically the for higher time values we will have a lower probability to find batteries that will last that large amount of time and so basically as we go higher with the, with the, with the duration let's say with the time the probability of finding a battery that will last that long will be very low and so it, it, it can be uh, found that it decays with an exponential trend so that's it it was only a, a brief explanation um, now we have defined our histogram, mm, 
As I told you, we will define our x array since we are not interested in, make a very, in making a very precise distribution. And to, to make the x array, I will just use another numpy function called arrange, which will generate an array. We have to specify the beginning, which is zero, the stop value, which in this case will be the length, length of the histogram array, which is hist, and then the step for uh, arriving at this volume, which is 1. So we will have that each value of our histogram will be, each consecutive value of our histogram will be separated by the previous one, by uh, the I unit value, by value of 1. Okay, perfect. So this will be our x array, or uh, sorry, our histogram x-ray and this will be our histogram y-ray with the values of the columns. Perfect. Now again we have to um, define the to, to apply an exponential fit to this function. So first thing that we have to do as you saw in the previous example we have to define the fitting function. So I'll write Fitting, sorry, to my t fitting function definition. Um. Okay. Again, really easy. Define. I will call it again. Exponential fit. The parameter. I will. I, I will call it a bit simpler this time because. I don't think that, I mean, only two parameters will be sufficient, I think. So let's go only with A and B, and we can leave apart uh, C, which is the constant, as you saw before. Um, and again, the function will be very similar to the previous one. The only difference is that is in the sign of the exponent. So it will be minus b, then x. Perfect. And then we will return this function. Okay. Now uh, we will call um, the the fit. Well, just before the fit, the, there is a practical issue, because if we now give to the fit. As an independent variable, this one, this array will contain the, the position of the of the leftmost edge of the of the columns of our Instagram, and so but by doing this, we will have our fitting function that will pass through the left border, the, the left corner of our columns. What we want to do to, to achieve a better a better graphical output is to is our fit to pass through the center of each of each column. So to do that basically we will create we will create an X-ray in which we store the position of the center of our columns and not the, 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 the position of the left borders. So to do it it's very simple. I will call this new array X fit since I will use it only for the fit. And as you can see, it will have the position of the to, to the position to the value of the position of the left border. We have to add to each of these value the uh, half of the width of our column, and this value is represented by the half of the value of the first column because the first column will be the one that goes from uh, of the second column because the first column will begin at zero the first the, the second sorry again the second uh, column will begin uh, right after the, the first one and so the, the he, he its left border will be the end of the first 
call. So the half of this value will be the, the half with all of our codes. So in this way, we, we define the, the, all the, the midpoints of our, of the columns of our Instagram. Mm. Hope to, to, to have explained this correctly. It, it will be clearer when we will plot the, the fit. So now we just want to apply our fit. So fit and as before, let's call the function curve fit. Now the the function again that we will use exponential fit. Um, the x and the and the y ray. So the x is the x fit that I've just defined, and the y ray is the hist array. For this case, since it is a simple mm, that set, I will not give um, initial guesses or other types of, of inputs to, to, to this function. I will just go on and create the, the array, the y array that contains the, the results of, um, of the fit apply, applied to, to, to our uh, x array. To, to our distribution, so uh, I will call it as usual fit equation, and it will be fit always the first array of the fit that contains the, the values of parameters. First parameter will be the a, which should be multiplied by the exponential, which is a number function, minus second parameter of the first array of fit which is b and this is multiplied by the independent variable which is x underscore fit okay so this will be again let's see uh, x array of the fit and this will be y sorry uh, y array of the fit perfect now let's move on what we have to do is just to plot our data plotting uh, yeah, I don't need to too many uh, definitions, and there, there no, there's no specific meaning for the x and the and the y axis. So I will just plot the data as they are using the Matplotlib. So to to plot our Instagram, I will use the bar function, and so I will give the position of the bars of the columns which was x, I will give the y values of the column, so the heights of the column, which are haste, again, as this value will be superimposed with, the, with, the, with our fit, I will just add a, a little bit of transparency, then I can also specify uh, the alignment, which means uh, that with the X array we are referring to, to which border of the column, I will, to, 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 to which, let's say not border, but we can specify whether it is referred to the edge of, of the columns or to the center and so on. I will use edge since in the X I stored the, the initial position of the column, the, the left border. And I can also specify the width of our column, since the x-axis contains uh, integer consecutive numbers. The first column will start at 0, the second column will start at 1. Also, the width of the column will be equal to 1 
just not to have the, the columns of our histogram uh, superimposed with each other, be, between each other. Um, now I can plot the fit again with a classical plot function. The independent variable our fit was x fit, and now we will find out y fit equation, which was the y array of the fit. Uh, I will just choose a different color. Let's stick to red again. Now let's plot. Let's see. Oh, there it is. Perfect. Um, as you can see, um, let me just yeah zoom in a little bit. The fitting function is passing through the center of each of each column. If we were to, I mean, I, I can show you directly. If we were to use the the same array that we use for the for the histograms, so the array that contains the, the position of the left border of the columns, so x, the results would have been different here. I mean, it's not a big difference. But it's more accurate if your fit pass right through the center and it's not referred to the left border. I mean, the, the visual output, the, the graphic output is a lot better with your fit passing right in the middle of, 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 the, of the columns. So yeah, uh, perfect. I, I think we're done. Uh, thanks again if you watch this video. Hope you, you you find it useful. Hope to to be, to, to to have explained the, the 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 concepts correctly and in a clear way. And yeah, hope to to see you in another video. Bye.